fucking bomb squad. Fine. That's a perfectly reasonable level to be paranoid at. Bomb squad shows up, evacuates two dorms. The, the Atlanta bomb squad blows up a couple of these dry ice bottles. $6,000 Here's where it gets a little, well, yeah, it's, you know, but, you know, it did, interesting times we live in. It's, I, that, that amount of paranoia is acceptable. I don't want people to get hurt in the event there's a real bomb. However, that's where the paranoia needs to end. When you actually find out what the fucking thing consists of, then you need to stop being an idiot. And that's the problem here. So the, 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 the police officer, the, the, the manager of the police who's responsible for the response to this incident gets on national television and declares that this was a terrorist attack. So the guy, like, turns himself in, you know, and yeah, that was me with the dry ice. And so they've charged him with felony possession of a destructive device. I mean, what the fuck? No, I mean, seriously, they went on national television and told everyone it's a terrorist incident, so now they have to be bastards. You know, whether, whether it really was terrorists attacking Atlanta or whether Atlanta was ta attacked by Marshmallow Peeps, we're going to prosecute this shit to the fullest extent of the law! <laughs> Give me a fucking break. Now, G Georgia, Tech, Georgia Tech fortunately ended the guy's suspension. They suspended him as a matter of policy because he got prosecuted. So they said, well, okay, we're going to end his suspension. He's attending classes. That's good, but... What the fuck is the matter with this prosecutor? <sighs> fuck that shit. I, I, that's the start of my rant. I just, I'm pissed off about that shit. That's ridiculous. That prosecutor needs to get run out on a rail. And there's a grand jury. Now, my understanding, and I've read some papers on this, my understanding is how many people in here know what a grand jury is? Not a jury, a grand jury. Have you ever served on a grand jury? A couple of you did. Did you approve the prosecution? Or did... Really? I, I read up this paper about how, like, 98% of all grand juries approve prosecutions. The, 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 it's been argued that the process is broken. And so the stuff goes forward. It goes to court. We'll see what happens. If the grand jury br rebukes this prosecutor on the felony charge for dry ice, it'll be a great day for the justice system in this country. So, I don't know. What? Right. <laughs> what are they going to do to the dry ice manufacturers if this gets approved? Hey, hey, arms manufacturers are now li shielded from liability except in the case of negligence. Yeah, but, but they're not an arms manufacturer. Yes, they are. They're apparently manufacturing destructive devices. And you better not fucking have one because we'll prosecute your ass. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. I agree. Yeah, do I have audio? Hello? Somebody jacked up the audio. All right, that's better. All right, all right, all right. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Blah, 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 So, whoever supplied that water, you're right. Yes, absolutely. Well, it came from the Atlanta water system. There is no fucking way that water fell from the sky. It came from a machine which adds toxic chemicals. All right, all right, all right. So I, I, I've tried to find out what people want me to talk about, and a bunch of people want me to talk about the United Nations and this DNS shit. Oh, I was going to say something about that. It's really the most unfortunate thing about this video is that about a year after this video was recorded, I had the the honor of actually meeting Tim's mother, and she's quite an interesting person. She, you know, works in the government, and she represents the United States on some very important issues, and, you know, she's delightful to have dinner with. And she was good to you, huh? Yeah, I, 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 if, if, if she ever sees these videos, you know, it's nothing personal. We were just making fun of your son. All right, next topic. I have no recollection of that, Senator. Um... So, uh, no, so, uh, fucking A, man. So, oh, excellent. All right. Well, 
This is something on the mic. Check a check a one two. I'm still not loud enough. Uh, uh. Check 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 check. All right, great. So, I mean, everybody knows everybody knows what ICANN is, right? ICANN is the motherfuckers that set the rules for DNS. I, I want to make it absolutely fucking clear that there's not one son of a bitch involved with this entire DNS management system that I like. Okay? I don't agree with any of these motherfuckers. On the one side, we got ICANN. ICANN is the governing body. They have been approved by the Department of Commerce as the, you know, management entity for the DNS system. And they make rules for, they actually make rules for the numbering authorities like Aaron and Apnik and... Uh, What's the third numbering authority? Right. right. Very good. Uh, so, um, you know, they make rules for them in terms of distributions and numbers, but nobody pays any attention to that shit. They also make rules for the DNS registrars. They make rules like it is a requirement that thou shalt provide thou's home address and home telephone number when registering a domain name. I'll get into that shit in a minute. i got a problem with that. So, um, in any event, that, that's who they are. Um, they're run out of the Department of Commerce. The second entity in question is Verisign, who has the contract. What? They, 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 they run. Well, they're, no, they're not communists. They're monopolists, which in a way eventually ends up at the same result. Uh, but they, um, they, uh, they're, uh, they, they have the contract to run a root, one root server, I think. They don't run all the root servers, and they also run the, the .com root server, and I think they might run the .net root server, too. So, um, you know, in any event, everything in .com goes back to them. So they're, everyone's aware that they put a frickin' asterisk .com entry in their database, you know, a couple years ago, because, uh, what? A wild card, right? You know, whatever. The, uh, so that if you fat fingered a fucking domain name, you'd end up connecting to their, their stupid search engine, which was cross-site script, scripting vulnerable, incidentally, uh, and also was a, annoying, uh, you know, and they had, this, this broke all kinds of people's shit, and they didn't tell anyone they were going to do it before they did it. They just changed the internet without telling anyone, and, and they're like, it's cool, man, you know, we've got all these reasons why you don't need to fix your software, or how you can fix your software to deal with the fact that this thing is there. You know, they're, they're filtering SSH inbound to their network, and so they don't reply to your packets, so if you fat finger an SSH connection, you know, it just sits there. Uh, so, in any event, understand that that shit with SiteFinder is still in court. It's still going on. They still want to do this. We've got all I can. Um, so, the other entity in question is the United Nations. Um, they have this. Um, they have um, a number of working groups on things like intellectual property. Corporations that do business internationally have an interest in having consistent laws internationally for intellectual property. ICANN is an international law legal organization. They created this domain name dispute system so that if you have a trademark dispute over a domain name, you can get it resolved with an arbiter, uh, and it costs less than litigation in your given country. And there's a standardized system for dealing with it across different countries. Of course. The person doing the accusation gets to choose the arbiter, and there's a market for arbiters, and studies have shown that the arbiters that charge the most money are the ones who are most likely to, to find in the uh, favor of the um, person making the accusation. Uh, in any event, it's an interesting system. It's, it's not totally bad. It does reduce the complexity of dealing with, you know, domain name disputes. But it, it's weird because it's this kind of international law about domain names and a judicial process for resolving them that is completely disconnected from any legitimate government. Uh, so, you know, it might cause people some concern. And so the, um, the folks in, in Europe and a number of other countries, you know, are concerned about the fact that, the United States Department of Commerce controls ICANN, who controls the Internet, because they're on the Internet. And uh, one of the objections that they've raised is, you know, if ICANN, ICANN also, like, doles out all the contracts for the root servers. If, if somebody at the Department of Commerce decided that they were pissed off at Iran, for example, and Iran is a, one country that has been particularly vocal about this, uh, they could tell the root servers there's no more .in or whatever the fuck their, their TLD is. And so nobody could access Iran anymore. And so they think it's a national security concern. And so 
What they want to do is basically have ICANN be managed by the United Nations. So I, I want to explain. I don't like VeriSign. I don't like ICANN. The United Nations is not going to do anything useful here, all right? Uh, anybody know who the, a the American National Standards Institute is? I, mean, I don't think they're actually controlled by the government. I could be wrong. I don't really understand their organization. But nobody really complains about the ANSI standard for C being an American standard. There, nobody in Europe is like, well, you know, we ought to have this controlled by, you know, the, the ITU or whatever. It's, it's not a big deal. Nobody cares. It's fine. I would prefer that nobody cared about DNS. That would be great. They do care about DNS, and it's not really because of national security concerns. That's an excuse. The reason they are concerned about DNS is because they want to fuck it up. <clears throat> so, no, 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 no. They, they don't need to fuck with DNS, man. They, they're just going to come down, and that's going to be it. All right? So, um, so, so, anyway, at the, at the, at this working group meeting in their intellectual property organization, a bunch of countries, uh, Iran and China being specifically like at the head, but the Europeans joined in, and that's what made it serious, um, you know, are simply arguing that ICANN ought to be turned over to the UN. I strongly disagree with this because they're not going to do anything useful. They're going to come up with a number of other standards that are, that are bullshit. And I don't think that their, their national security is threatened. There's two reasons. There's a project in Europe to create an alternate system of root servers that operates in Europe that all the European ISPs will connect to. I think it's called the Open Root Server Project or something like that. And it mirrors ICANN's root servers. So it essentially provides you with the same Internet that you get everywhere else. However, if the United States were to go armadillo and take Iran off the Internet, they could decide to stop mirroring the United States and continue to resolve Iran. So that resolves our national security concern. Just don't, you know, build your own freaking root server network, and, you know, if the shit hits the fan, you can do something different. It's fine, you know. But, of course, they don't accept that argument. Um, because that's not really what they care about. Uh, the, um, let's talk, the, another excellent example, and this is something that I care about a lot. I really don't like the requirements that ICANN places on DNS. I, I don't think that you should, I don't, and I've had, there are some folks here, network engineers, many of whom disagree with me on this. I do not think that DNS who is is a good way of tracking down security issues on the Internet. If you have an Internet problem, I think that you should track down the IP address that your problem originates from and not the domain name associated therewith. And that if we focused on IP address who is and not DNS who is, we could actually have an effective system for responding to events that connects people with ISPs that are responsible for networks that are causing trouble. However, nobody cares. Nobody fucking cares about the standards for IP addresses. There are people that steal IP address ranges. Fucking A. At meme streams, we have this guy who is a URL um, referral spammer. He hits our website with his bot like a bazillion times with his referral set to some online gambling site so that in hopes that we'll publish the guys that linked us and won't notice that, you know, the top link is coming from onlinegambling.com or whatever. So, um... So this guy, this guy actually consumed 1.6 gigabits of bandwidth in the first week of October. And so I started researching him. He's in the United States. He has his own AS number. And there's, I found an article about him. He, he jacked a, well, it was some government IP address range. He just started advertising it on BGP. He was just like, yeah, this is my IP address. This nobody actually enforces, like, you know, rules about, like, you know, whether or not you're actually registered in RRDB or any of that shit. They just like, yeah, sure, fine. We'll route the packet your direction. That's cool. This bullshit ISP, you know, I, I don't even remember their name. And those guys had, like, a bunch of peers. I, I have yet to start the conversation with the people that his ISP is peered with about this guy and the story. The reality is that his ISP knows full well who the fuck he is. You know, but that's an example. There's all kinds of IP address ranges that have simply been stolen by people. Nobody's paying attention, whatever. There are some projects involved, but they're, they're, you know, it's not a major policy issue. Major policy issue, let's make sure that everyone who registers a domain name provides their DNA sample upon, uh, upon doing so. The reality is that I think DNS who is is a great way to publish contact information in the event that you wish to, and it ought to remain voluntary. If you have a problem with what's coming from my computer, you should contact my ISP, which you can do by looking up who owns the IP address. However, 
the greater minds than I can don't agree with this and have created a policy that says that thou shalt provide your real contact information. If you find someone who does not provide their real contact information, there's a complaint page for this. It's kind of hard to find. But if you find it, they get an email generated to them. And if they don't respond within 15 days, their, de their domain gets cut off. They used to have a human being that was auditing these things before they were before the emails were sent out. They would look and see if abuse was occurring, and they ran it for six months, like a long time ago, when no one knew that this thing existed outside of the like inner circle of ICANN. And uh, they didn't find any incidences of abuse, so they said we don't need a, a human being here to audit this stuff. So we're just going to get rid of that step in the process. So, so um, Canada has a law. Whatever. They have, a <laughs> they have a law that says that, it, that they have a privacy law which actually prohibits their DNS registrars from requiring people to publish their home phone number. It's illegal. So they went and took .ca and they created a different set of policies that said if you're an individual and you have a domain name, you don't have to publish your shit if you don't want to. If you're a corporation, it's a little different and you can apply for an exception. But... For individuals, you don't have to you don't have to provide your damn phone number, and you know they that's a violation of ICANN's policies. But ICANN was like, well, we're not going to do anything about it. It's illegal in your country, and you know so that's a perfect example of a. First of all, I think Canada did it right. I, you know, I, well, you know, whatever. You know, in, in this particular case, many times they do it wrong, but in this case, I think they did it right. I don't think that ICANN should be requiring people to publish their information. And, and, and the sinister thing here is that you can now go to these third-party DNS providers, and you don't actually register their domain name. Somebody else does it for you, and they provide their contact information. This makes it harder, because if you want to publish, say, your email address, you can't do it, because you don't own the domain name. Someone else does, and they have to provide their contact info. Furthermore, you have to pay an additional, like, $9, so it creates this market um, which out, of, out of thin air just because we're being jackasses. And the, the other thing is that, uh, that there are these companies that do this sort of anonymizing have all these standards for, you know, to avoid liability, wherein they're not liable if they turn your personal information over to somebody. And so it sort of creates this, this weird exception to the First Amendment, wherein... If, um, if, if, uh, if, if, the, uh, if ICANN wasn't requiring you to publish your personal information and the cops showed up and they wanted it, they could only do it if they had a court's permission. They can't just get your personal information. But with these anonymizing services, they will fold in certain circumstances. And those, circum those circumstances are not the circumstances that American law would set up. And so, in a way, it's, a, it's, it's like First Amendment light. And, you know, I don't, you know, you may look at the list of things that they provide exceptions for and say, well, that's all bullshit, and so I don't care. But the reality is that we have this legitimate dem democratic process through which we make these rules, and, and ICANN doesn't have that. It's a bunch of guys in a room. All right, They're, and, and, and they, they have no democratic legitimacy, and yet they've been able to carve out a change in the way that these these rules work on the internet, and that's that's a little questionable. Um, so, in any event, what I'm getting to with this Canada thing is that Canada has been able to completely change the rules for how DNS works at, with respect to their country, and there's no problem. So there's no way in which the United States controlling ICANN prevents countries from doing what they want to do with DNS. They can make their own rules for DNS, they can have their own root servers for DNS, and everything will be fine. So what's the fucking problem? The problem is that they want to coerce you into doing shit that you don't want to do in the same way that ICANN has been able to coerce you into providing your home phone number. They have their own list of shit they want to coerce you into. And this is a, this is a lever through which they could exert that authority. So it's bad. The United Nations is not going to do anything useful with DNS. Anything that they could propose and, 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 you know, and advocate, you can do voluntarily if you want. The whole point is to force you to do shit you don't want to do. And so one must oppose it. It's bullshit. Now, this thing that's going on here in Europe with the alternate root server is supported strongly by this guy named Paul Vixie, who's a fucking ninja. Uh, Paul Vixie is supporting this stuff. Now, Paul Vixie wrote Bind, or a large percentage thereof. 
No, no, he doesn't. You're right. He doesn't think it's a good idea, but he's helping them anyway. And there's a very specific reason why. The reason is that he is afraid, he's deathly afraid, that the DNS system is going to fragment. He likes the idea that there is one Internet. And if I sit down on computer A and I type in memestreams.net, I get it in the same fucking website that I get if I sit down at computer B and type in memestreams.net. And that idea is rational. The question is whether or not human beings are mature enough to actually do that and get along. I don't think so. I'll tell you, between ICANN and their stupid privacy policies, the United Nations and whatever bullshit Iran wants to impose on the rest of the world, and fucking VeriSign with their stupid search engine, I think it is inevitable that this shit's going to fragment. And it is going to be... It's, it's almost like nuclear war, right? In the 80s, everyone was scared shitless that there was going to be this massive nuclear war. And it didn't happen, Right? And it was amazing. It was like, holy shit, you mean we didn't destroy the planet? I, you know, you wouldn't have expected human beings to have made it through that process without, uh, without killing themselves. And you're right, it may still happen, but it'll happen in a slightly different way politically. In any event, oh, I'm working on it. All right, fine. Fuck. This is the same perspective I have about this DNS shit. I think these people are going to fuck it up. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna fragment. I think being optimistic. <laughs> there you go. All right. If they do not fuck it up completely, it's gonna be a goddamn miracle. It'll be just as much, uh, just as amazing as the fact that we didn't go to nuclear war with Russia. What? I don't. Uh, oh, you're right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fuck. I tr I try to talk about the future. I try to give people perspective. And the reason that I do this is because the reality is that what you really need in life is hope. You need something to look forward to, and then you can be happy. And, and, and if you don't have something to look forward to, then, then, then you just become despondent, okay? And I've read psychological studies. This is the case. You just All you need in life is something to look forward to. That's what it boils down to. And so I'm trying to give these people something to look forward to, and you're bringing up the goddamn aliens. Okay? Fuck that. I, look. At the pragmatic point of view is that everyone needs to operate as if the, the fucking cataclysm wasn't approaching, okay? Because then they will enjoy the very short period of time they have left in their lives. <laughs> There's only three more years left, and I just don't want to get into it. Just go be happy, you know, be merry and drink and multiply and, you know, whatever. Don't worry about those aliens. All right, so back to the fantasy land that we're all living in prior to the alien invasion. Um, one thing that I think is interesting about this community is that you guys are the guys who are going to experiment with the interesting shit before everyone else gets there, okay? And the reality is that you're going to figure out how shit works. And if you look at Jason Scott's documentary, I mean, the reality is that back in the day, everyone was experimenting with bulletin board systems. And I remember freaking out when I saw my little sister, who, who, who is not a computer geek, very much not, you know, and her friends fucking chatting on AOL when I was in college. And I was like, that was strange. Because they weren't nerds. They were just regular people, and they were using this, they were doing the same thing that we were doing back in the day when it was all a bunch of geeks. This community will do stuff that... Everybody in the United States is going to do, you know, five years l hence. And so, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's a fucking dystopia. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Actually, there are fucking, there are Pentagon planners that are fucking looking at that, but we won't get into that here. So, in any event, the, the, the thing is, the thing is that, uh, you know, you guys have the opportunity to experiment around with this shit. You could create your own DNS system. If you, and so if something fucked up happened, like, you know, VeriSign w got a court order allowing them to reinstate SiteFinder, and that's bullshit, or, you know, the United Nations takes over ICANN and decides that, you know, if you say fuck on your domain, you lose your domain name, or, you know, you have to provide a DNA sample in order to get a DNS registrar, and we ban the anonymizing... Just take it off the black dress. What? All right, so whatever. You can run your own DNS system. You can create your own Internet. 
That's very difficult. But what you can do that's interesting is make your own shit and make your own rules for how it works. And if you were going to build your own internet, you might do more than simply say that we're not going to, um, you know, operate SiteFinder. You could create, well, dude, you obviously haven't worked with IP6. I, IP6 is, oh my god, dude. Anyone who's a network engineer, get out, get out now. When that IP6 shit comes out, I mean, do you have any idea the amount of hassle involved in just configuring an IP on a device? Okay, the infrastructure is not zero configuration. That's for end users. Your ass is going to end up typing all that crap in. Get promoted now! <laughs> all right, so... so you could you could build your I, I don't know what, which is the Gibson novel where the guys had turned the internet inside out I think it's uh, um, all what no I don't think so I think it was the new one it was the pattern recognition wasn't it was it okay all right I I I I've been outvoted here so Mona Lisa Overdrive there was these kind of ha weird hacker punks and they talked about turning the in internet inside out the problem with the internet is that everyone's got access to your shit. You can create an entirely different network where it's just an inside scene and it's the interesting people. And uh, you have a totally different set of policies. You allow anonymity. You maybe require encryption. You have your own DNS hierarchy and it works the way you want it to. That's something that these people in this room are capable of creating. And that's why I think it's important to talk about. It's r there are a number of alternate root projects that are out there right now. Oh, I agree. They all suck. Let's make a better one. The, the reality is that I don't want to turn to any of them in the event that ICANN does something stupid. But I think it's inevitable that VeriSign, ICANN, or the UN will do something dumb. So I think that people should play with this shit, and that's why I'm talking about it. And I think the ultimate message of this UN drama is that the people in this community need to be prepared to set up their own root servers. How hard is it to point your damn DNS configuration instead of at the IP your D ISP gives you to somebody else's IP that's doing some interesting stuff? It's not hard. Okay. So, how much time do I have? Oh, really? Holy shit. I need to drink. Well, I'm going to give... I'm going to give this rant that I considered giving, and I didn't know if I was going to go there, but if I got as much time as I want, fucking A. How many of you have taken history outside of high school? Good. No, 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 no. The drug is high school history classes. I become increasingly annoyed uh, about the level of fucking bullshit that, that goes on in high school history. I realize they have a compressed period of time. I took the AP test. I fucking got to college. I tested out of the U.S. history class in college, and I didn't hear a damn thing about it. The reality is that if you're going to be an American and you're going to be voting and shit like that, you need to have an understanding of what the fuck has gone on in this country for 200 years so that you can have... You can put the shit that's going on in context, and you don't get that. You get, like, the executive summary version that, like, sort of glosses over, you know, huge, bleeding problems. It says everything's cool. Trust the government. It's fine. Yeah, it's a Disney version. So... How many people, who's the first president of the United States? I just want to run this test. No, it was not George Washington. Who was the first president of the United States? Who was it? What was his name? Nobody fucking knows. No, it was not Emperor Norton. We're not going there. I don't fucking remember either. What about John Hancock? That guy was a fucking bastard. I, I, you know, in a good way. He, he, he was this shipping guy up in Boston. You know, he had ran some, he was kind of an entrepreneur, kind of a venture capitalist kind of guy. Did some shipping stuff. He fucking hated the British government because they got involved in his shit and he just wanted to, like, do his business and not have them fuck with him. And he wrote his name really big on the Declaration of Independence because, and you've got to understand, those guys were going to get hanged for that shit if they, got, if they 
didn't win. And he wanted to make sure that the king actually read his name. So he wrote it really big. And everyone knows that John Hancock is a fucking synonym for, for a signature. But nobody knows that he was president of the United States. Nobody fucking talks about what he did. In any event, that's just an example. Okay? High school history is bullshit. So, in any event... How many, pe- how many of you understand that, like, when the United States started, the Bill of Rights did not apply to people? It applied to the... F- the federal government was not allowed to violate the Bill of Rights, but, this, but it didn't apply to the state governments. So, there's one. The state governments could do any fucking thing they wanted. The Constitution of South Carolina was intentionally crafted to prohibit Catholics from holding public office. And that was fine! That was cool! The history of the United States The history of the United States is this process of increasing power in the hands of the federal government but mostly not entirely but mostly for civil rights reasons. So you had this situation, I'll, I'll explain. You had this situation where the states could do anything they want and when people talk about states rights when they talk about they talk about, uh, you know, originalism. They're kind of leaning toward this period of time. Or uh, my, my favorite is limited government. Now, some people say limited government and they mean it. Some people say limited government and they're, uh, rem- they're, they're forgetting to, like, it's sort of an abbreviation for limited federal government. They don't really mean limited government. They, limit, they mean limited federal government, unlimited state government. They want to return to the time when South Carolina could prevent those damn Catholics from holding public office. The reason I'm talking... No, that's an interesting point. So we'll talk about that. So the thing is that I, I, well, last time I got up here and I talked about the election and I talked about Supreme Court nominees. Now, I had no fucking idea that Rehnquist was going to die and that O'Connor's husband was going to get sick. That's, that really isn't what I meant. <coughs> and the reality is that if a conservative president nominates new conservative candidates for the uh, Supreme Court, it's not going to significantly change the nature of the court because those people were conservative to begin with. However, uh, there are other people on the Supreme Court who are a hell of a lot older who might pass away or quit while George Bush is still president, and if they get replaced, that's going to significantly change the nature of this country. And so that's what I was leading to. And so nothing really, well, until Harriet Myers was nominated, nothing really bad had happened. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I want to talk about her, and I want to talk about, you know, w- what, the, what the context is of this shit. So... So, like, you had this deal, and then, and then basically you had the situation where, even though it wasn't the Articles of Confederation, it was the Constitution, the federal government was fairly fucking weak. And so you had this situation where this side of the country went off over here, and that side of the country went off over there, and it was really two different cultures, two different systems, and they ended up at each other's throat, because that's what happens. Okay? You're going to have one culture, and everyone's going to be cool, or you're going to have two different cultures, and everyone's going to try to kill each other, and that's what happened. And so you had the Civil War... Um, and uh, you had this thing after the Civil War called the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment does a lot of things. One of the things that it does, sort of, is that it applies the, the Bill of Rights to the states so that regardless of whether or not South Carolina wants to have a First Amendment, they're going to fucking have one and they're going to fucking like it. I personally support that. And, and th- this is encroaching federal government power, okay, because the federal government can go down there and enforce the idea that South Carolina is going to have a First Amendment. Sometimes, if, sometimes federal government power pisses me off, and in this case, I don't have a problem with it. Anything that reduces the amount of regulation that goes on is fine. Yes, yes. I'm not going to run. With these videos, do you think I'm going to get elected? <laughs> no way in hell. Yeah, but he was friends with the, no one is going to protect you from the aliens. Just forget about that and live your happy life. Smile. Let's focus on. So, 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 um, you know, it really, so the thing is that the 14th Amendment wasn't, 
explicit. And then there was this fucked up court case that kind of said, we don't agree the 14th Amendment really works. And then there were some other court cases that said, individually, particular rights were incorporated. This is, gets inter interesting with respect to the Second Amendment. This is why the Second Amendment is such a big debate. Because it says that we're trying to establish militia, and so the individual right to possess weapons shall not be infringed. That was a perfectly reasonable thing to say in 1776 when you had a situation where the states were not required to uphold the Bill of Rights. So if you were trying to create a militia, you would prevent the federal government from regulating the individual right to own weapons, knowing full well that the states were going to do that. And so when people talk about how they were intending to have militias, that's what they were talking about. The problem is that, in my opinion, a, a proper interpretation of the 14th Amendment, and also in the opinion of the guy who wrote it, uh, was that you know all of the Bill of Rights applies to individual people. And in that context, and the states can't violate it, in that context, the Second Amendment becomes an individual right to own guns. And so the problem with laws is not like computers. Computers, you fucking say do X, then Y, and if, you know, G, then V. It's very clear. It's not going to do something else. It's very clear cut. The law, not so much. It's like, whatever. Fine. You know, and that's been the jurisprudence on the Second Amendment. People are like, well, you know, the 14th Amendment probably incorporates it, but we don't really want to do that, do we? Because that means that it's legal to possess nuclear weapons, so let's just pretend that didn't happen. And I would prefer that they just go in and fucking amend it if that's what they want to do, so that the law actually says what it's supposed to mean, but that's because I'm a computer geek and not a lawyer. In any event, that's the, that's the reason for the dispute over the Second Amendment. And I think they like the way it is, because the reality is that it creates this perception that there's an individual right, which creates political pressure to prevent regulation of that, and a lot of people care about that, but at the same time, it really isn't an individual right, and so when they need it not to be an individual right, it's not. And so... They like the ambiguity. It's useful to them. No, you're right, you're right. No, nobody had nuclear weapons in 1776. Uh, but I, I think that those people did, in fact, have a perception of technological advancement. Maybe they didn't see it this far, but... Did they not? Not even in the lab? Wow. Oh, yeah, all right. Oh, they had smallpox back in, like, 1492. This is... I'm going to go off on a tangent here. If you haven't read Guns, Germs, and Steel, it's an awesome book. Um, but I won't go into too much detail. Basically, anyway, whatever. Smallpox is way more important than conquistadors. But um, the thing is that... Um, you had all these things that went on, particularly in the 50s, where they said the Bill of Rights are incorporated, the states have to abide by them, and that's why the federal government was able to go into Alabama and force them to integrate their schools. And that's a good thing. And so, wow. And so, and so um, you know, there's this dialogue that goes on today about the philosophy of jurisprudence. And you've got some interesting individuals, and sometimes I like Clarence Thomas, okay? When, when they tried to prosecute this guy for handing out leaflets on the street without, uh, that were political leaflets without attaching his name to it, Clarence Thomas wrote a, a concurrence with the majority Supreme Court decision telling him to fuck the hell off and wrote this interesting history of anonymous political pamphleting in the, like, in the 1700s. Very, very cool. At the same time... These, he wrote, um, I'm trying to remember the case. It was a recent case. There was a recent case in which he wrote, this, uh, he wrote this decision, which was essentially almost pretending that the 14th Amendment didn't happen. It related to, oh, it was the, it was the under God thing with respect to the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. He wrote this decision where he was like, well, you know, that whole establishment clause was intended to be a collective thing with respect to the states. And it wasn't an individual right, per se. So, it's really not a problem that, uh, you know, we have coercive religious ceremony in the country. So, you know, so, so the Republicans have this whole group of political philosophers. Some of them, I think, are cool at times. I think Scalia is cool at times. Scalia, I really enjoyed reading Scalia 
throw the fucking book at the Bush administration about the idea that they were detaining people indefinitely without trial, without specific permission from Congress. I was like, fuck yes, that's unconstitutional. There is a separation of powers, and they're intended to be checked against each other, and that's how it's supposed to fucking work. However, the guy's an asshole. As, as, uh, you know, I, I, he tends to say things that are, you know, a little bit, you know, eh. and, and I mean, sometimes I find it funny, but mostly when he's, like, talking shit about somebody I don't like. Uh, one of the, the people that the political philosophers on the right wing like is, is Janice Roberts Brown, uh, who's, I think she's on the Ninth Circuit, I could be wrong, but she's, a, she's an appellant judge. And she, they think, I don't know, a lot of people seem to think she's a libertarian. She kind of hates government. But the problem is that she doesn't think the First Amendment should have been incorporated. She doesn't believe in First Amendment rights. And so, I don't know, I've been reading all these essays about jurisprudence, and I've seen people talk critically about, anybody know who Griswold versus Connecticut is? So it... It creates this weird problem. So you have this thing called the Ninth Amendment. And the Ninth Amendment says that, you know, we may have enumerated these things like freedom of speech and the right to be, you know, safe from, you know, having the cops come into your house without a warrant. But there's other rights that we didn't enumerate that are still protected. And we're not going to enumerate them. You're just going to have to deal with it. And that was fine with respect to the original arrangement of the deal where the federal government, you know, was limited. And they, th there were people who argued the federal government really couldn't do anything but regulate commerce anyway. And so, you know, then the state governments were unlimited, so it didn't matter. Um, but the thing is that now that we've incorporated everything, you've got this thing where, like, the federal government is prohibited from passing laws that are completely undefined. And so there's this court case called Griswold versus Connecticut, and I think it's fairly reasonable. What they were basically saying is that, you know, yeah, there are undefined rights, and one of the things that seems to come out of the Constitution when you read it is that you have a right to privacy. The, the, the reason that the cops can't come into your house without a warrant is because you're assumed to have a right to privacy in your home. And so what they said is that you have a right to privacy and that this is actually a constitutionally protected right. And, you know, in this case, they were talking about contraception distribution, that you couldn't make, a, you couldn't make it illegal for people to use contraceptives because in order to bust them for it, you'd have to be in their bedrooms. Uh, it seems fairly reasonable, but, at the, you know, at the same time, it's, 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 it's not explicitly spelled out in the Constitution. And so the conservatives' argument is that because it isn't explicitly spelled out, it's too vague and we shouldn't have it. And, of course, the thing about Griswold versus Connecticut that really gets people riled up is that it was the fundamental precedent upon which Roe v. Wade was based. So the issue is that you have these guys who... This is my problem. These guys are arguing that, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, this thing shouldn't have been that way. But the reality is that they really just don't like it because they don't like the idea of a right to privacy. And they particularly don't like the idea that that means, you know, that X, Y, Z with respect to abortion. So they just want to do away with it. With HIPAA. Oh, well, that, that's, uh, HIPAA's not a, HIPAA, man, the problem with fucking HIPAA is that HIPAA, HIPAA protects your privacy when, when you don't want it protected, and it doesn't protect your privacy when you do. The cops come in and ask your doctor about your, do your, your health record? No problem. You, the CIA, the whatever, no problem. They'll fucking turn that shit over on a dime, but like... You end up in the hospital in another state, and your buddies are hanging out with you at the time, but they're not related to you, and they want to find out whether or not you're alive or dead? No fucking way they're getting any information. Well, that's that too. Yes, no, HIPAA, HIPAA, HIPAA prevents your friends from finding out whether or not you're alive or dead, but certainly does not prevent the government from investigating you. And so, I don't know. In any event... Yeah, yeah, I know, but they're paying me for that because I'm a computer security consultant. No. Uh, <laughs> a little bit conflicted. No, no, no. Uh, you know, so, so, you know, there's all this debate. And so they want a conservative jurist, and, and they have this whole philosophy that you should have originalism, and I, I think it's bullshit. I think that, I, I kind of think it's an interesting idea. I think the idea that the law should say what it means, I think that's reasonable. But if you were really fucking serious about it, you'd propose a constitutional amendment protecting the right to privacy. 
I think that that makes sense. If you cared about privacy, you don't care about privacy. You've come up with this philosophy because you don't want privacy and you want an argument that allows you to do away with it. So, no, 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 you're right. I'm very idealistic here. I'm talking about how things ought to be and not talking about how things are. And so, here we go with Harriet Myers. So, so now the reality here is, it's 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 all about Scalia. Scalia is who the conservatives think is their is their sort of prototypical justice, and he's an interesting character because he usually tries to say that the law ought to say what it ought to say. And he doesn't like sort of weird stuff coming out of the sidelines on the law. He likes the law to be very explicit, except with regard to marijuana, apparently. Because the, the Constitution clearly says that the government has the right to regulate interstate commerce, and Scalia's opinion is that if you're growing pot in your backyard and you're smoking it yourself, that this is interstate commerce. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> Shut up. Um, so in any event, so in any event, they, he, they want him to nominate somebody like Scalia, but Scalia ripped him a fucking new asshole on these, on these, uh, on these, uh, on the Abu Ghraib thing, and so he didn't make Scalia the chief justice. He pulled up Roberts and made him the chief justice, and now he wants to nominate his buddy, who will do what he wants her to do. And he believes that that is the best thing for the country because he's engaged in this fight for survival with these Islamic terrorists and, and he doesn't want them second-guessing the decisions he makes with respect to detention of people domestically. And all of us, I think, understand better than he does the risk associated with allowing that to occur. It's not that we think that Hamdi was a cool guy and that we ought to release him because he didn't do anything wrong. It's that we don't want to allow the government to simply arrest people arbitrarily and detain them with absolutely no fucking check and balance. Because this is America and we have fucking checks and balances. I don't understand why he doesn't get this. He wants to have somebody up there on the court who will say, yes, Mr. Bush, or whoever secedes him from the Republican side, and says, you know what, fine, detain him, we don't care, we don't want to know who he is or why you detained him or whatever, just detain him, it's cool. That's what he wants. That's why he nominated her. And he's pissed off the Republican Party because they want somebody who is going to say that the 14th Amendment didn't occur, we shouldn't incorporate the Bill of Rights. So it's like I'm trapped between a rock and a hard place here, okay? I've got a bunch of people who... Now, this is, this is my... How many people here think they're libertarians? How many people here are libertarians who are involved with the Republican Party? Nobody. Wow, that's cool. There's one. I, I, no, no, no. I mean, I think that you guys have been duped. And I think that the Republican Party uses libertarians but they don't actually care about their point of view. It's like they like you with respect to the idea that you talk about limited government, but they're not interested in limited government. They're interested in limited federal government. And so uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, things have gotten a little bit weirder recently. But in any event, I, I think that they have a lot of libertarians on their side because the libertarians give them arguments that they can use with respect to federal government power. But when it boils down to it, they don't really want what the libertarians want, which is individual rights. What they, what they want is the ability to do whatever the fuck they want to do without having things in their way. So that's what Harriet Myers is about. The Republicans don't like her. There's this other thing. I think that they, this is what really bothers me, and this will be the last part of this rant. I think they thought she would fly. And I think they thought she would fly because she's not part of the establishment legal system. And that's why the Republicans are pissed off. She's not a philosopher. Part of it is that she's a woman, you know, and they, they had a woman on there, and they got rid of her, so they want another woman. And, you know, women, that's important to them, obviously. And so th there's a political aspect to that. But that's, you, you don't want a woman, a random woman. You want a woman who represents what you agree with. And so that's, you're not that stupid, Okay. Uh, the, the, the other thing is that, that she's not part of the establishment. She's not part of the establishment, so 
you know, all these fucking people who are on the talk radio shows on fucking AM radio are pissed off about these goddamn academics and their stupid, you know, Harvard, blah, 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 kick the army recruiters off, you know, and they want to fuck the system. They don't want intellectuals on the court. They want a common man on the court. And they want a common man on the court who is an evangelical Christian who will shove that shit down the throats of these goddamn atheists and all their crazy ideas about Darwinism and all this bullshit. That's what they want. And I think that, they, I think that the Bush administration felt that Harriet Myers would represent that to the people, that she would be this person who is a lawyer, but she's not part of the system. And she's an evangelical Christian, and she'll go up there and fuck shit up. That's what they want. That's what I think that they thought they were going to get. And apparently, the point of view that we want to fuck the system is not so much strongly defended by the people who agree with it. It's just something that the opinion makers have led people to believe. And he pissed off the opinion makers, and so now the opinion makers have pissed off the opinion holders, regardless of whether or not it's consistent. In any event... I don't know, whatever. That's my rant. Is there anything else that anyone wants to fucking, like, hear about? What? What the fuck is a star court? I've never heard the term star court. There's this thing called the FISA court. Now, the weird thing about the FISA, the FISA court basically approves intelligence-related stuff, and the, it's a secret court. You can't get public documentation about what it does. And the reason you can't is because it's intelligence-related investigations, and they don't want to disclose it. It makes sense in a way. Now, what's scary is that there's an FISA court and a FISA appellant court. And the FISA court basically made a lot of noise about two years ago about the kind of shit that they were seeing that they felt was unreasonable, that they didn't feel like they have the ability to... Uh, to protest. And so the FISA appellate court basically said, no, you know, we're going to go up ahead and, and allow these people to do what they're going to do. And so noise coming out of those guys is, is, is scary. But it's, it's hard to tell what the specifics are because it's all classified. No, no, I mean, half the deal with the... What are you going to do? You're a terrorist. The whole thing is, you're a terrorist. They don't want to tell you that they know that you're a terrorist because you'll stop being a terrorist. So they want to go and get a warrant or they want to, you know, do X, Y, Z, and they're, they're not going to provide you with representation or notice or the ability to contest it in court because they don't want you to know what they're doing. And so this creates this big legal problem where on the one side we have this system wherein you're supposed to be able to defend yourself against bullshit, and then on the other hand, we don't want these people to defend themselves, and we have to figure out a way to fucking balance it. I mean, sir, well, I, yeah, I... What are you going to do? Go for... Yeah, dude, then you don't have anybody to fucking tie up in your prison and, like, attach to electrodes. Anyway, I, we won't get into that. No, I don't think we'd have two very tall buildings in New York City. They, they bombed that shit before. They were going to bomb it eventually. Uh, those people are assholes. I, I care about checks and balances. I care about civil rights, but those people really are assholes. Well, I hope the fucking hurricane isn't about to hit her if she's drunk. So anyway, whatever. Who else? Is, is there anything else that I, I don't know? Whatever. I, I, it's endless. No, I'm not going to fucking talk about the aliens. No. The EBs. What? I don't know what the EBs are. Oh shit. I might not be ready. Next day. I don't know what they are. I, all I know is that aliens are going to come to Freak Think 12 and they're going to kill everybody. For those interested, this dead horse will be beaten somewhere else.
<laughs> wow. Apparently, Mr. Milliken does not like my rant. No, I love the rant. No. but, but the You called it a dead, the, the aliens are a dead horse? You people aren't creative enough. Who's pissed off about something? I don't care. Oh, I'm not about what we're anymore. What, about what? 2257. What the fuck is 2257? No. I'm out of the loop. Porn dealers must have full records of all the actors no, 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 and actresses. No, 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 That's not what's interesting. What's interesting is that they've expanded that to pretty much be anybody that has any sort of sex scene in their yes, film. Yes, or implied. No, 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 okay, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one, I've got one. An unrelated law. So everybody here knows what the fuck Sarbanes-Oxley is, right? I don't, I don't really want to bitch about Sarbanes Oxley. I don't like Oxley the guy because he proposed something. I don't even remember what it was a long time ago, and I wanted to make his last name kind of a, a, a slang word for a swear. It's like, you know, when something sucks, instead of saying something sucks, it's like, dude, that's Oxley. You know? <laughs> I think it would work perfectly. Uh, but and, and then eventually it would get around in his district, and people just wouldn't vote for him anymore. <laughs> but in any event, um, Sarbanes Oxley requires each company to teach people about securities fraud. So everyone in every company has to take this fucking class in securities fraud. And so California so thought that that was a great idea. And so they said that, how about every two years, you have to do two hours of sexual harassment training. Maybe it's, re you know, I don't mean to support sexual harassment. At the, you know, I, 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 it's definitely a problem. But the thing is that, like, at the same time, every fucking two years, you have to sit down and watch some stupid video that they put together about sexual harassment. You saw it two years ago. You know what it says. And you're just like, ugh. It's like four hours long. And, uh, you know, and so, like, it's just the beginning, right? The next thing they're going to do once this is successful is they're going to require every company to teach all of their employees about, you know, tax fraud or, you know, unethical, blah, blah, blah. And you're, eventually it's going to wind up being like you've got to spend like a week out of the year going to class where you get government-issued training about X, Y, and Z. And it's... There's no way that there's no limit to this. Once they decide that you can do this once, you can have this one class about Sarbanes Oxley. They, they, the door is open to teaching you about all kinds of shit, and it's. Oh, are you fucking serious? The hedgehog. No, I mean, it's like... No, no, we're against sexual harassment, but we're not for requiring people to take a class, like, all the time. What were you going to say, sir? I'm sorry. Really? How long does it take? How long is the class? Is it repetitive? Is it the same material every three years? Oh, that's good. At least they keep it, you know, new and fresh. You can see what the education gets us of this time. What do you mean? They forgot to run the class? Ooh. All right. Let's stop recording right now. No. I have no clue. But what I will... I'm too drunk. What's important is that if you... If you have a if you have a company like Kroger where you got like people who work as baggers and shit and you got turnover like every two weeks, you got to train them every fucking time. And so there's these companies that like sell training classes. They're sort of like the companies that sell anonymous DNS registration. They're like making all kinds of bucks on this shit. Anyway, whatever. Um, I, I, I beat the dead horse enough. Everyone's bored. They want some comedy. Who's up for some comedy? Clap, you people! Knox is fucking brilliant. Where is he? He's coming up soon. We, we've got. So I gotta entertain you guys in the meantime, or are you gonna entertain? I've got them? stuff to do. I mean, I lied, lied earlier. I, dance, I, I lied earlier when I said that you had unlimited time. Because we got other shit to do. We got shit to do. You're not drunk enough. Get off stage. Drink more. <laughs> 